Zyla here. Welcome back to my channel. And I have had this map sitting in my closet for years. And it is the paper sectional that I did, I did all of the flight planning for my private pilot's license on. So it's got all of my scribbles as a little baby student pilot on it and like notes with like flight following and VORs and all that jazz. And I thought today would be a really good day to turn it into a little aviation themed bar top. So that's what we're gonna do. I get a lot of comments from people asking me to do more projects that are actually attainable to do at home, and I think this is one of them. So it is currently five o'clock in the afternoon, evening, I suppose, and I'm gonna try to get it done by the end of the day. Let's go. But before we get started, a quick word from our sponsor, War Thunder. I just love waking up in the morning, having my nice cup of coffee, and then getting in my plane and going into battle. You betcha I got the air covered, but my crew's got my back. Or tail, I suppose, in this case. From land to sea, and the best part is I do it all from the coziness of my couch. Forget planes, trains, and rockets, because we got tanks, naval vessels, and bigger, badder warplanes battling it out in the epic, free, cross-platform multiplayer game, War Thunder. Me and my bros can play anywhere, anytime across PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Mac. The latest update, Sons of Attila, added an entire family of unique Hungarian ground vehicles to the game. In addition, aerial battles have become even more atmospheric thanks to the voice warning systems that have been added, like those in Modern Fighters. Graphics have been improved with new visual effects that now dynamically change depending on lighting. When I want to take on stuff a little more my size, I jump in my massive tank and see things go boom right in front of my eyes. Yeah, bad girls do look back at explosions. The visual effects are like nothing before. You can really see the chaos and destruction I bring with my big guns. Plus, there are also so many ways to upgrade different devices, armor, vehicle crew, and equipment, as well as customize with different decorations, camouflages, unique skins, and decals to show the other side who's the boss. Download War Thunder for free using my link in the description below. All new players and anyone who hasn't played for over a year and a half will get special bonuses like renting the P-40E1 aircraft and M4 tank for a week, along with free unique skins for them, a special decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, three premium vehicles for free, a week of premium account, and even more gifts. Hurry up, the American vehicle bonus season will end soon. And with that, let's get back to building my little, little airplane bar top for little airplanes. The base platform that the map is going to be glued to is just plywood, so I took a, a scrap piece of half inch ply I had left over from the trailer and cut it to width. For the not map parts of this bar top, I decided to use a little bit of the reclaimed architectural salvage cedar that I have lying around, and I got a huge pile of this stuff for like $5 on Facebook Marketplace a couple years ago, and I've just been slowly working my way through the pile, and it is really, really pretty wood. Um, it's got a lot of blemishes and it's really naughty, but I love the way it looks once it's planed out. So I broke out the planer and I just started putting all of the lumber through. It does need a, a good amount of planing because there are little bits of concrete still stuck to it. And I acknowledge that I am not treating my planer very well here, but I will say this is actually a big part of the reason I didn't upgrade my planer to helical knives. I just left the stock knives on there because they're way cheaper to replace. And I acknowledge that I'm being mean to my planer, but also it's a tool and it's meant to be used as a tool. So I changed the planes when I need to, and I put the wood that I want into it. <laughs> With all of the cedar boards planed and ready to go, it was time to cut everything down to the correct length, including the sheet of plywood that the map is gonna be on. And for smaller cross cuts like this, I tend to do them on my miter saw and then just flip the piece over. And it always matches up really well if you do it carefully. Um, and then I set up an end stop at the end of my workbench, as you can see here with the, the orange clamp. And then I just slid all of those cedar boards up against the end stop and cut them to length. And then I know that they're all going to be about the same length because I also cut the plywood against the end stop. And because I don't have a jointer, I just set up my table saw to take off the kind of gross edges of the boards and flipped them over brought the fence in a little more and did it again. And you get this like sort of nice dimensioned lumber and it's like a vintage aviation look anyway. So that was all of the post-processing I did before I glued, glued and nailed them all down to that sheet of plywood. 
and this will serve as the underside of the bar top. So it's not even the top, so it doesn't even have to be that great, but I wanted to give it a little bit more structure and also like a slightly nicer look than just plywood. I'm not gonna lie though, I really like the look of this and I'm kind of bummed it is the bottom of the bar top. Uh, with all of those on, I committed some absolutely terrible sins with my router, except because the edges were covered up and I was in a rush, I decided it was fine. But like, you know, I left it in here to show you that we all do bad things sometimes, but I was at least safe about my bad things. Um, and once the edges were all flush, I gave it a very quick sanding and decided to hit it with some varnish primer or wood sealer before I left for dinner. The idea here is basically this will take about an hour or two to dry enough to the touch where I can flip it over. And I want, once the epoxy is cured on this, to just be able to flip it over, throw legs on it and be done. So I wanted this part already sealed before I went in with the epoxy. And conveniently, I had a friend coming in for dinner, so I needed to take a break anyway. All right, it is 7.42, so I am two and a half hours into this project. And uh, ironically, one of my friends from flight school is actually flying cargo now, and she has a layover at LAX. So I'm gonna go pick her up, we're gonna have dinner, and then I'll finish it. Last minute before I left though, I decided to also trim the edges of the skinny piece of cedar that I'm gonna be used to frame the map, um, just because it felt rude to do that at like 9 or 10 p.m. when I get back from dinner. This is my friend Julia. She Hi. got me through my private pilot's license because she was studying for her CFI at the same time. Anyway, we just had dinner and now I shanghaied her into helping me. <laughs> She's a mechanic, so like it's not fair. <laughs> Before cutting it down, I decided to round over the top outer edge of my skinny piece of cedar. And yes, I could have done this on the table router, but it was late. My table router is a lot louder than my palm router. And then I cut all of the miters to create a frame around the piece that we built earlier. Yes, there are some really good mathematical ways of cutting perfect miters. And no, I did none of them. My quick and dirty way is just to mark the edge, like draw out my 45 and then go to the miter saw and hope for the best. And then I pick the corner that is going to be the least visible and I try to direct all of my errors there once I put it together. Um, and part of this is that like this is, the goal of this is to be a quick and easy project and also it's kind of like a vintage reclaimed look anyway. So a little bit of gappage is almost expected I think as part of the look of this cedar. So at least that's what I tell myself. Before assembling the frame onto the plywood though, I needed to glue the map down. And gluing the map, I've learned this the hard way. I, on the trailer, it took me two attempts to epoxy the map onto the kitchen top because the first time I didn't glue it down properly. So then I bought some spray mount and tried again and it worked way better. And this time I'm taking it one step further and actually ironing the map before I glue it down to make it a little bit flatter and hopefully lay a little bit straighter and neater. So I spray mounted uh, the board and then we just laid the map as neatly as we could and I am so glad Julia was in town for this because it would have been really hard to do as one person and to be honest we couldn't get all of the creases out like the number of times that I folded and unfolded this map nervously in the cockpit during some like long student cross country because I got my private pilot's license completely on paper maps I never used a GPS until I was like already had my tailwheel actually um and so there's just a lot of creases that were like, there was no way to get them out. And I decided to leave them because it's like kind of a cool part of the map and a cool part of its story. So we got it on as best we could. And then we were ready to put the frame pieces on once we trimmed the outside of the map down flush with the, with the wood. The outer frame was assembled with the same technique as the bottom, just liquid nails and nails, real nails. Liquid liquid nails and solid, solid nails? Is that the best way to say this? Um, and I cut this skinny piece of cedar with just enough height so that it's slightly wider than the plywood and the other pieces of cedar on the bottom so that I could create a little bit of a lip so that the epoxy had like a little bit more depth around the map. And the other thing is that liquid nails has a lot of its own width, but clamps really help pull it together. So we clamped the 
the cedar on and it squished the liquid nails really nicely. And then we could put real nails to hold it in place. And then we didn't have to like leave the clamps on while it cured. That was a terrible way of explaining it, but I don't really feel like re-recording the voiceover. So um, that's, that's what you get. <laughs> We were a little bit nervous about epoxy leaking through because the side frame pieces were maybe not watertight to the plywood. And by that, I mean definitely not watertight. So we just taped them and then we leveled the piece out by shimming blocks under it. And it was time to mix up some epoxy. And this is actually the first time I'm using Maker Epoxy by Total Boat. It is a very cool mixture that's like built for makers. Um, it's like tabletop epoxy, but it has a little bit of like UV, anti-UV rather additives. And it's just a good option for bar tops. And I am like really, really happy with the way that it came out. So I mixed that up and then it's like the moment you can't take back, which is pouring epoxy on a paper map. I have struggled with these big flat pours before, mostly because it's not what I specialize in at all. Um, but our friends over at Bottle Tote recently came out with their own set of squeegees, and one of them includes this like notched, it's like a notched trowel for grout, um, but it really helps get an even flat coat just like this. So if you're doing big tabletop work, I highly recommend, I mean, you don't need to get theirs, you can get like any notched trowel, um, but the notches are big, big game changer. Highly recommend. <laughs> And unfortunately, I pretty quickly realized that I did not mix enough epoxy. I mixed 32 ounces in the first batch, and then I went and mixed 32 ounces in the second batch. And even that was not quite enough. When I came out the next morning, I decided to impulsively mix another 32 ounces and do a second pour. But this definitely, like, this did do a good cover. To get the epoxy to cover the wood nicely, I just dragged it over the edges with my hands and just smeared it all over the wood. And right here, it looks a little bit splotchy and drippy because like the drips that had already come over had already seeped into the wood, but once the new epoxy goes in, it all evens out. And once the epoxy is mostly where I want it to be, I use a heat gun to knock the bubbles out of the surface. We got back from dinner at like 10, 10, 10, 15 ish. It's now one in the morning and we're done. Easy little one day project. I'm super jazzed with how it came out. And it was like very serendipitous that Julia had an LA layover tonight for this, for this project because she helped supervise some of the lines drawn on that map. So, yay! <laughs> Go to flight school because then you get cool friends that fly in all the time. Yay. Okay, so this is the end of night one, and as you can see here, it does look really good, but there are a couple of dry spots, and what I've learned is when epoxy cures, those dry spots just look even drier, because more epoxy is kind of gonna fall over the edge and down onto the floor, and there will just be less of it. So the next morning, I decided to, I came out to look at it, and I decided impulsively to throw another coat on. I have to go to the airport in like negative 10 minutes, but I came out here to grab my batteries to go film something away and I decided it needed another coat, so I just threw another coat on, and now I might miss my flight, but hopefully it was worth it. It looks a lot better, though. In the spirit of one-day projects, buy things when you can. All right, let's carry this into the house. This one down to Mansfield was my long student cross country 
and I got lost. <laughs> Cause there's nothing out here. It's all cornfields. When I moved to California, everyone was like, how the f did you get lost on your cross countries as a student pilot? And I was like, A, I was using paper charts. B, everything in Ohio looks the same. It's like cornfields and football fields. And your only chance of knowing where you are is to fly low enough that you can read the like high school name on a football field. And then finding your way to Portland was really easy. Everything up at the lake 